towering reputation of John Tyndall, pioneer, scientist, educator, and alpine climber, gives no hint of his humble origins in County Carlow. John was born in 1820, the son of a police constable stationed in Lachlan Bridge. While his parents were not wealthy, they had a great respect for education. To set a young Tyndall on a path to becoming one of the Victorian era's most highly regarded scientific minds. Having a world-class local teacher was another crucial factor. This was John Conwell. In his classroom and on walks along the barrow, Conwell opened John's eyes to mathematics and the sciences. Once in the snow, they traced out the proof of the theory of Pythagoras. Hungry for knowledge, the young Tyndall found inspiration in an early edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica. With this as a guide, he conducted the first of the experiments that characterized his practical approach to science. His first job was with the Ordnance Survey in Carlow and later in Cork. But after transferring to England, he was fired because he led a campaign on behalf of Irish engineers to receive equal conditions and pay as his English counterparts. However, surveyors were in high demand during England's railway boom of the 1840s, and Tyndall worked for four years as a railway engineer. In 1846, he pursued an opportunity to become superintendent of the engineering laboratory in Queenwood College, Hampshire. Tyndall was eager to stretch himself intellectually. He decided to pursue a PhD under the supervision of Robert Bunsen, inventor of the Bunsen burner and father of spectroscopy. Disciplined and hardworking as ever, the 28-year-old received his goal within two years. Returning to Hampshire in 1851, his scientific abilities were soon noticed. The most eminent scientist of his day was Michael Faraday, who soon became Tyndall's mentor. Faraday was elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society of London, which is still the government of British science. Through his association with the Royal Society, Tyndall founded the X Club, joining such luminaries as Huxley and Franklin, who were devoted to promote the theories of evolution and the tenth member, Darwin. Continuing a tradition begun by Faraday, John brilliantly presented public lectures that featured spellbinding practical demonstrations. These experiments brought his many areas of study to life. His investigation spanning magnetism, heat, light, and most notably, studies of the greenhouse effect. Tyndall demonstrated the fundamentals of infrared science, the basis of atmospheric physics, and established the sciences of infrared spectroscopy and spectroscopic scattering. Tyndall's time was not spent solely in the laboratory, lecture hall, or at the writing desk. 2,300 meters high in the Swiss Alps, above the village of Belle Alpe, the Tyndall Denkmal is memorial to John Tyndall. This commemorates the frequent mountaineering expeditions he undertook from the mid-1850s onwards. During these, he was among the first to reach the highest alpine summits and also studied the motion of glaciers. In his 1873 lecture tour of the east coast of the USA, he raised enormous sums to establish the first research facilities in the four Ivy League universities, Harvard, Penn State, Columbia, and Yale. When he was 55, Tyndall married 30-year-old Louise Hamilton. Together, they built a holiday home in Belle Alpe. They remained happily married for 18 years. Then, in a tragic mishap, Louise gave him an accidental overdose of chloral hydrate. Immediately realizing this, Tyndall said, my darling, you have killed your John. Despite attempts to save him, John Tyndall died on the 4th of December, 1893. Today, Tyndall is remembered as a giant of Victorian science. His curiosity, towering intellect, and ability to communicate 
were all fostered in Cairo by his local teacher, John Conrad. Tyndall never denied his Cairo roots and loved his native Lachlan Bridge. Tyndall deserves to be remembered and celebrated as a scientist and writer. He wrote around 20 books and his name is connected to infrared spectroscopy, clean room methods, sunset light scattering, Tyndall Blue, optical telecommunications and fibre optics. <laughs>